Hello everyone, this is Christy. In today's easy to follow tutorial for Camtasia, I'm going to show you how you can combine animations into more complex animations because Camtasia mostly has animations uh, in a straight line. So when you have uh, an object, you want to move it from point A to point B, it moves in a straight line. You can rotate things, but um, you know that only gives you so many options. So I've recently got a question from someone who wanted to combine a more complex animation. So to have some objects kind of approach each other, but rotate at the same time. So I want to show you how you can group objects together and create more complex animations. So this is a very easy tutorial for beginners. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please feel free to subscribe for more Camtasia tutorials, video editing and so on. So let's move on with this project. I'm going to just keep it simple and because I want to illustrate how you can do it so it's easy to understand. So I'm in Camtasia 2020 and I'm just going to go to the annotations and go to the shapes and then switch all shapes down here in the style. So you can see I have all the shapes available and I'm going to just use a circle. This is one of my um, favorite shapes to demonstrate things with. So what I want to do is uh, just to illustrate this, I'm going to make another one so I'm going to put another circle here, maybe give it a different color. I want these circles to uh, move, kind of spin around in a circle, but also draw together, you know, draw close to each other, um, sort of like a Venn diagram, if you want, uh, where they kind of intersect and then they uh, show you some sort of a, a ratio of intersection or whatever. So you can see on the timeline here, the both of these have occupied um, one track. So each one has its own track. Depending on how long I want the animation to go, I can just select both of them and just pull them, pull the edge, the ends like this. So if I pull it around here, it's going to be like 30 seconds animation. So at the moment, there's nothing happening here. What I want to do is I want them to kind of spin together fast and then also draw close to each other. So how do you do this? Because you can't, you can, in animations in Camtasia, you have these various animations here like uh, scale down, scale up or whatever, these pre-built animations, which are not useful for me in this case. And you also have the custom animation, but this is all of course in a, moving in a, in a straight line, pretty much. The first step is you need to kind of direct, you need to think about what you want to happen and then you can plan ahead which of the animations you're going to apply first. I said before I want these two circles to spin around and draw close together. Now spinning around is very complex to do and unless uh, you apply some tricks you can uh, actually see another one of my videos in which I show you how you can make an object uh, spin around in a circle while it's it's maintaining its uh, orientation. Find that link to that video in the description. But I think we, we need to approach this a different way. You need to make them draw close together first and then ap uh, apply the rotation. So how do you do this? We, well, I'm going to just drag a custom animation to the first circle and make it as long as 30 seconds for now. We can adjust this later. I'm going to move this object to the center of my canvas. So now you can see my object is moving from that point to the center of the canvas. I'm going to do the same with the other object. So I'm going to keep the playhead at the end of the animation of the first one here and drag another custom animation here at the uh, end and just drag the ends to the same point of the starting uh, position. So move back in here and move this one as well to the center. Now to see them better, we can probably apply a bit of opacity to them, like uh, reduction in opacity, like about 60% maybe for both of them so that you can see them actually merging together like so. So as you can see now, both of the circles kind of move together to a single point. So this is the first animation I have created. But what about the spinning part? I want them to spin together. This is the part where you can add complexity to animation because you can employ the use of groups. So let's select both of these clips and right click and say group or you can press Control G. So now they are both in a group 
I can still see the animation happening here, look, but you can see that line around them, that outline, that, uh, that rectangle around them that shows sort of the boundaries of my group. Camtasia actually creates like a mini canvas inside of the group and the animation just happens inside there and whatever you group together will have its own sort of canvas. Sometimes that can be a good thing but uh, sometimes it can be a bad thing because the uh, sort of virtual canvas it creates it can cut off some of the objects as soon as they get out of the group. I'm not going to go into much detail about grouping right now but look what happens now. If I want these two objects to spin around while they're still getting close together I can actually add another custom animation to the group itself. So again let's make this as long as the previous ones but in this case the animation is not going to move anywhere it's just going to be rotation. So you can see here on the right the Z axis rotation spins this group around. Depending on how many rotations you want to have you can just spin this dial so, you know, I mean, 1,400 is going to be like uh, four times around its axis. So let's just leave it like this, 1620. It doesn't really matter because at the end, they are both circles in this case. So let's see what happens now. If I play this, we have the easing that starts slow. We can deal with that later. But you can see now across the uh, about 20 something seconds, my circles spin around each other, but also get close to each other. And as an added bonus, they also increase the opacity. They decrease the opacity, so they become transparent. So you can see now the circles end up together while also having spin, spun around each other. So this uh, slowness, slowing down and up is actually the easing. We can right click on the animation here. If you don't see it, let me pull the window up. You can right click on the animation and you can enable easing and say it's linear or you know whichever type of uh, easing you want. Linear is going to move in a constant speed. So now if I play this, the spinning starts quite abruptly and never changes speed. Also you can do the same if you open the group and apply the same change to the both animations. So change the easing to be linear. So now as soon as they start animating they will move at the same speed um, the rotation and also the uh, movement where they approach each other. So you can see now this is one of the more complex animations where you are using these groups, this groups facility feature to make things uh, move in, in more complex movements. So if I wanted to add more complexity to this, all you can do is really just take this group and group it with itself. Just control G and we've created a new group which I can now animate further. I can create a custom animation on this group as well. Let's just keep things simple. But do you notice this thing that I told you about? When you group something, whatever is inside becomes cut off. So that's why you need to plan ahead your animation as uh, from the outside in so that your uh, movement up and down, whichever that's going to be, make that first and then group everything together because the group outside will actually encompass the entire canvas space of the groups inside. So in this situation if I want to move um, let's say my animation, my third animation, my third layer of animation wants to move this thing like to the corner it's gonna do it but look what happens. The um, inside group is actually cutting off the animation. It is moving towards the corners as you can see, right? But the uh, the two circles are being cut off because the inside group has created a virtual canvas and this other group only creates the canvas as to the point where it started. So this is actually one downside of Camtasia's groups. If you want to prevent this cutting off, maybe you can create an invisible object that takes the entire canvas and include that object in your group. So then the group will actually be forced to occupy the entire canvas, right? So I'm, I have this annotation here that is a, a rectangle with just an outline. I'm going to make this one take the entire, uh, the entire canvas, spread it for the entirety of the duration of the animation 
and remove the thickness of the outline. So it's basically an invisible object. And now look what happens if I group this together, my animation, my, my third layer of the group um, occupies the entire canvas and my objects are safe. They're not being clipped. So now I can actually add more animation to this group that I just created, a custom animation here, and maybe move it towards the, uh, towards the edge, whatever, the corner. So look what happens. My objects are not being cut off anymore because this invisible canvas-sized object uh, forces the group to occupy the entire canvas. So there you go. This is how you do it. So before you group an animation to create another animation, maybe you should probably create one of these invisible objects that will force the group to stay, uh, to occupy the large space and, and give your object space to, to move and not being cut off. Well, I hope this was useful to give you some insight onto how you can create some uh, complex animations. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. If you enjoy my tutorials, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this, give it a like. And if you have any questions or uh, you, you have things you're struggling with with Camtasia, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make a video or explain it if I can. Thank you again for your time. See you next time.